Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. First thing I'm going to want you to do is just say your name. Uh, my name is Frederick Smith. Uh, Fred, when did you come in after? Boy, that's out of left field. <clears throat> um, started, started, I think, at, at, at an early age. Um, I recall singing and uh, dancing, uh, singing, yeah, and dancing too. For my mother, <clears throat> she uh, she was ill, bedridden. Uh, in those days, it was uh, it was consumption, and uh, she was stricken with the stuff. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's uh, that's when all of this stuff started to happen. I had a penchant for it, I think. I'm not sure what that's all about. But uh, started acting as, you mean, uh, trying to make a living at it? Is that no, right? I, I like where you started singing and dancing for your mother when she was sick. Yeah. Because I think a lot of us start somehow like that. It yeah. just comes out of us. Or, and, and then we discover, oh, I like doing that. And maybe it leads somewhere else. Yeah, I think back at it uh, from time to time. Because uh, uh, I think I saw her on her feet once. She died when I was six. Yeah, yeah. Well, it <laughs> it left its mark on me. You can, uh, as you can well imagine. Um, yeah, it was a stark, a stark message at an early age. Because I was really close to her too, much closer to her than I was to my father. Uh, so that's when uh, that's when this thing started. What did your dad do? <clears throat> he worked for the Northern Electric. He was a worker. Uh, took care of the, the building up on uh, Hutchison and near Van Horn. Uh, from Nova Scotia, Halifax. Uh -huh. Yeah, the whole bloodline goes uh, back to Halifax. I think uh, uh, this is a story I put together because there, there was never any, never any uh, uh, meaningful conversation between us, my father and I. Somehow it didn't happen. I, uh, you know, I, I, thinking about it, uh, pondering it, I, I think that perhaps he, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't macho enough for him, perhaps. Yeah, it's a curious thing to say, eh? But that's what I think. He was a tough little guy. He was about five foot seven, five foot eight. Uh, <laughs> they couldn't keep him in school. I did some research, genealogical research, some years later, and uh, uh, he got as far as third grade and uh, <clears throat> had to leave town for some reason or other. Mm -hmm. So I think I was conceived in Halifax when I was born in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, did he, did you have siblings? Younger sister. And did your father proceed to raise you by himself after your mother died? Good question. I had been to Halifax with my mother <clears throat> at, an, at an early age, I must have been two, before my sister was born. I have a vague recollection of my grandfather, who was at that point, I assume, was, he was ill. Uh, dirt poor people, you know, dirt poor people. Uh, so when my, <clears throat> when my mother died, uh, my grandmother showed up on the scene from Halifax. She had just buried her, grand, her, her husband. Wow. Uh, and uh, here she had to come home, uh, come to Montreal and take care of two young kids and her dying daughter. It's almost tough on the old lady. She's a tough old bird. She wore a bun in the back of her head, you know, glasses, a bun, wizened, tough. None of this huggy huggy stuff. No, no, no huggy shit, man. Oh, it's just uh, <laughs> curious because. <clears throat> I think that's where I'm at. I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those huggy types, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so Granny was with us for, uh, oh, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Went back to Halifax with Granny with my sister when I was nine. This was just 1938, I guess, somewhere around there. Uh, so. <laughs> 
we shuffled from Halifax to Dartmouth to Dartmouth to Halifax to, to you know, the, on the ferry. <coughs> sort of interesting. I have mem memories of that too. But uh, when we got back, we were there for about a month or so. I was there a couple of years. Well, I, I spent some time there in the last 10 years. I go back every second year or so, visit friends. Uh, uh, I have a cousin in the genealogical department in, in, uh, in Halifax. They've got a beautiful building there. Uh, and uh, I went back with Carl. I'm mixing things up a little bit. I went back with Carl to find out about the family. And uh, some papers came up. I had very little to go on. It was like a detective story, right? Mm -hmm. You're in these files, watching files, and there's things going by. So I had some questions. And so I, I, I addressed this man in the middle of the room at a desk, busy guy. I put the stuff down in front of him, the papers. And I remember him looking at it and looking at me, looking at the paper. So uh, I'm your cousin, <laughs> he says. <laughs> yeah, you know, <clears throat> we weave a tangled web. No question about it. Gary, Gary Schutlach is my cousin, chief archivist, the archives. <clears throat> Where was I going with this? So I go back every once in a while. I went, the last time I went, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm a photographer of sorts. I, I went looking for a place called Two Shore Road on Dartmouth, in Dartmouth. And it's like a one-way street. But anyway, I got that goddamn place, and there it was, Two Shore Road. That's where Granny and I and Joyce stayed. Might have got a new face on the building, but it's the same old building. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting. Talked to the old guy who owned it, too. Yeah, we all slept in the same bed, Granny, Joyce, and me. Then you went back to Montreal. Back to Montreal. That's when it got kind of complicated, because a woman appeared on the scene. Old dad had to get his rocks off, I guess, whatever. Uh, he met this waitress. She was a nice woman. She, she just didn't mean well. Uh, well, I, I mean, that, that's a cruel thing to say, I suppose. It's probably the cruelest thing I've ever said about the poor lady. And it was a war for five, four or five years. I just wouldn't accept it, you know. Uh, but she turned up on the scene. I think they got married. <clears throat> and, uh, and I was 10. Oh yes, and uh, while all this was going on, you have to understand that this was a very tight-knit community in the street, Esplanade Avenue, you know, three, uh, <clears throat> three stories, all the women knew each other, they knew the kids, everybody, it's like a community thing. Mm -hmm. And Cecile showing up in the scene was like, ooh, scandaleux, you see? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that was... <laughs> so did, did your anger start? Like at losing your mom, and, or, or when Cecile came on the scene, did you find yourself backing out? Well, what happened was that it could complicate matters even further. <clears throat> I got up one morning, and uh, Granny was gone. They stopped She she left without saying goodbye. She just left in the middle of the night. I don't know. Never saw her. Never saw her again. <laughs> so I'm not sure how the hell I handled that. I don't know where my emotional baggage was. It was very confusing, I, I would imagine. I was, what, 10 years old and all this shit's going down. But uh, <clears throat> so I'm sure there were some doors went down in the back of my head somewhere, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I spent as little time at home as possible. Yeah. And, and started hanging out with the neighborhood kids. Well, what happened was that, uh, yeah, I left public school and decided to go to Montreal High, which was one of the major, poor, one of the poor decisions I've made with life. And I've made a number of those, God only knows. Uh, uh, yeah, there was f four years of desperation in a row and I couldn't deal with it, any, with it anymore, this high school stuff. <clears throat> and I left in 11th grade. I just walked out. Uh, I told my father, you know, I just I don't want to go there anymore. So, so I went around and got various jobs. And I wound up working for the CNR in uh, the building department, and just outside the central, central station, underneath the railroad tracks. You know those buildings underneath the railroad tracks? Fuck. Dirty, dungy, rumbling all day long, messing around with waybills, you know. Fucking waybills, Christ, in the freight department. 
So being in the CNR with all these people, <clears throat> most of them lived in, in Verdun, La Salle, Point St. Charles. That's where the really, yeah, right. And so I started hanging out in Verdun instead of going home. Uh, yeah, I met Wilma Riley there. At the, so, uh, did, you, did you know Fenerio's father at all? David? Yeah, do you know his no. people at all? No. No, no, I never met Fenerio. He's from the point, right? Yeah, yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen his stuff. Well, his first book was really great, called Without a Parachute. You know, it was yeah. about the working class guys from the point going over in the war and being used as cannon fodder. You no. know? What yeah. else is new? What else is new? You know? It was my old man, too. He was in the First World War. Yeah, the worst part of the whole war for him was, uh, was uh, he was in the artillery, so he had to deal with horses <clears throat> and 18 pounders. And uh, in those days, the horses were more valuable than the men were. You had to take care of that horse, man, or else. Yeah, yeah it was the screaming of the horses at night, you know, when they're getting hit with shrapnel and stuff. You know, fucking war. And for what? Why do we do this? I mean, even the Second World War is questionable in my mind. It's big business. Americans were involved in there. George Bush's grandfather had opened up, the Nazis had banks in New York, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> they bankrolled the goddamn thing. I mean, Hitler put together a war machine in what, four years, six years? That was second to none. Where did he get the money? Because after the First World War, the place was broke. They were going for a loaf of bread with a wheelbarrow full of money. I'm carrying on like a horrid fit here, right? Eh? Terrible. Wait, wait, was it? I guess it's all these things, but you discovered your political self. Yes. When did you first realize you had one? Yes. This is, this is due, this, my father was, was uh, from that point of view, yeah, I've always, yeah, that's, it's been a strange thing. He had a, he had a map on the wall, right, of Europe, and he followed the war <clears throat> faithfully. And he was a left winger. He was, he was hoping, I like, I, he, he like, yeah, he leaned toward the Russians, you know, who were fighting on a 2,000 mile front. Christ's sake, was. Uh, so, uh, and he took me to uh, some political meetings, as a matter of fact, too, uh, left wing meetings. Uh, they used to have meetings, you know, elections, were, when elections were happening. And uh, so I went to a couple of those with him. I think he was trying to expose me to something or other. I don't know what the hell it was. But he wasn't active. He wasn't actively in the, in the political world, he wasn't active at all. So I took over from there, I guess, that's what happened. It stuck with me. It stuck with me, something stuck with me. So me and Pete Munoz, Pete Munoz, he was a close buddy of mine. Right. Munoz, but he called him Munoz. His old man was from Santiago, Chile. Big man, you know, Indio. Big face, big nose, great guy. Used to talk about hanging las, las, los pristas from telephone poles in Chile. Nasty old guy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So Pete and I were very close, and so was Phil De Rosa. Close guys all lived on Esplanade Avenue. So anyway, the showbiz, showbiz. So, so, how, how does like a, a, a kid who's had a rough start to his life and has got a lefty working class father and is skip getting out of school because it's driving him fucking crazy, and he's hanging around with two other lefty little high like, shit disturbers? How does he become an actor? <laughs> okay, okay. There was Pete and I sitting on the goddamn stoop one night, and there was an election meeting going on at Edward VII School. I lived across the street from the school. I was never late once. I learned to fuck all in the... I, I didn't learn much in the public school, and I understand now more than ever why nobody learns anything in public school, or high school, or university for that matter. I'm. I'm a dedicated enemy of the educational system. We'll get into that later, maybe, <clears throat> as we go on. So Pete and I thought, well, we're going to go and see what's happening at this election meeting. And uh, it was a bunch of, it was a communist meeting. Harry Binder was there, and Sid, uh, Sid Markman. Sid Markman was a classmate of mine. <clears throat> so we went out, it was held in the basement at Edward Seven School, 
And uh, I got to talking to Sid Markman. I was in school with Sid. Sid was in my class like a bright guy. So I told him, you know, we got talking about how do I get involved? What's, you know, what, what's, what's going on here? What's happening? And we realized that we understood that there was, uh, it was an underground movement. In some respects, it was an underground movement. They couldn't shut them up. There were certain limitations to what they could do to you, you know. It'd make your life miserable, but they couldn't really damage you in any real way. So Sid told me about this meeting at, uh, on, uh, on Park Avenue, near St. Vieter. Her uh, yeah, so okay, so he told me when, and Pete and I, and we got DeRosa involved in this too. He was, DeRosa was, DeRosa was messing around with the Social Democratic Party or some fucking thing, I mean, Socialist Labor Party. But we were with, this was the real goods. The Communist Party was the real goods, so we talked DeRosa into coming too. So the three of us showed up at, uh, at Harry Freed's house, which was essentially a cell. And as I walked into the place, I saw this carriage in the hallway, and there was a baby in it. it turned out to be Josh Freed. <clears throat> he hates it when I bring this, every time I see him. Anyway, <laughs> I just bought his book a couple of weeks ago. So it was pretty interesting to watch uh, all of these people uh, who lived kind of lives soup circumspectly, you know, they, it was, they were in an underground movement and three guys walk in, especially three, the Goyim, Christian guys. I mean, wherever you get a revolution, you're going to have a Jew, some happening, you know, it's inevitable. It has to be, because they all, they, they strive for an education. <clears throat> they bust their ass, I mean, stories are endemic about the Jews in Poland, you know, having to pay for a couple of Christian guys so their kid could go to school too. Fucking horror show. Anyway, uh, so that was the beginning of that was the beginning of our work with the left wing movement. And I played, ba I organized the baseball team in the senior league, the Montreal Senior League, for God's sake. Uh, we did a lot of stuff, but then there's always the cultural stuff. There was there was literature all around, you know. There was always encouraged. Uh, and uh, Irv, it was a guy named Irv Myers who uh, ran what we then called the Dramin, uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was just a drama, what was it? Dominion Drama Festival? Hmm? Dominion Drama Festival? Well, we entered the Dominion Drama Festival right. a number of times. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cops try to keep us out of these things. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, I was the first time I was on stage was at Jesu. We're doing a anti Nazi play. It was called uh, the Flame Within. <laughs> it was an adaptation of one of the big, one of the ten in Hollywood. What's his name? Short. I can't remember his name. It was his play. Right. It was about a German soldier coming home and telling a story about you know what he did, and coming home with women's women's undies and not for his for his mother sort of thing. Was it right? Fuck. But uh, that was what we did. And we did other so transliterations of, uh, of the bourgeois gentilhomme, for instance, you know, that kind of stuff. We entered all of the, uh, the festivals. That's what started it all. Right. That's what got it going. And then along came the, uh, the what was the 50th? It's when, it's, when the, it's, it's when the party went tits up in the Soviet Union, when they found out that, that our hero, Joe, was, yeah, yeah was not such a nice guy because we would get a lot of stuff from the Soviet Union, a lot of propaganda stuff, beautifully cut, four colored, you know, magazines like Life magazine, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, but how good things were there. Yeah. Oh yeah, nobody knew about the Ukrainians starving to death in their thousands, <clears throat> or the people coming back from the Second World War being sent off to uh, the gulags. I mean, the poor goddamn Russians—they lost 26 million people for Christ's sake. Let alone the guys that don't—they don't count the guys that Joe put away himself personally. Anyway, uh, uh, so disillusion. So yeah, it was. It was this. Well, the Communist Party went tits up here. Just like it was over, you know. There were some guys hung on, but it's like a religion, you know. It becomes that. It becomes your life, and you can't see any. It's 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 it's, it's blinding. It's blinding. Too much. It's crazy.
but this goddamn stupid system we have encourages that. <clears throat> um, so uh, that was the end of the of of, 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 the, of the of the theater world for me in, in the left wing movement. So I found myself knocking on the door of, of uh, the uh, 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 Montreal. What was it? Jesus Christ! Montreal Jewish Theater. No, 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 no. It was it was it was it was a legitimate kind of theater in Montreal. It was like right. yeah. what's it called? Yeah. It'll come to me. I remember. Oh yeah, and the first thing I did on stage with those with those guys. Oh, I remember the director calling me aside saying, Frederick, are you a communist? I said, what? Communist? I was too young to be a communist. As a matter of fact, I was. I, I couldn't get into the Communist Party. I was too young. <laughs> oh, I got the part anyway of the janitor and my sister Eileen. What, what year was this? A good question. It's got to be mid-50s somewhere. Mid-50s, right? I would imagine, yeah, between mm -hmm. 55 and 60, somewhere. When did, the, when did the Communist Party go tits up? In Canada? Well, in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union. In Russia. Anyway, somewhere in around there. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's when, that's, when, that's when it happened. That's when it started. Right. So there was other stage presentations, other, other stuff I did on the stage. But uh, I started knocking on the CBC's door and the film board. I became a hound up at the film board. This is in the 60s? Yeah. Yeah. So was that when you became an actor, remember? Yeah, somewhere in the 60s there, maybe earlier, early on. Uh, but in those days you had to have, I don't know what it's like today, but we had to have 10, 10 working tickets. Six, to get, yeah. yeah. Similar, I think. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Jimmy Tapp was a big help for me. Yeah. Jimmy Tapp had a television program, a weekly television thing, yeah. and he would play some some piece of music that was uh, was on the air at the time, and he called me in to uh, animate it. Right. It was just a it was a bloody riot. It was crazy. It was just improv, you know. Yeah. Improv. He turned the goddamn thing, and I go through some rigmarole. Uh, the only one I can remember right now is uh, the song was, "I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter." That's what it was. Right. Yeah. And you'd act out a little scene. i do a little thing, a little number. And you get a credit for each one of those. That's right, yeah. that's right. So I was, I don't know, I got maybe six or seven from uh, from Jimmy. What was the dough like for those, can you remember? Oh no, I can't remember. But like 10 bucks, 20 oh, bucks? Oh, probably, yeah, yeah, 20 bucks, 25 yeah. bucks. Yeah, good. <clears throat> but then I got into the CBC. The CBC had a, started a thing called uh, Shoestring Theater. Mm -hmm. Kinescope. Uh, Gibbon. Guy Bon, yeah. Yes, right. Oh, Guy Bon, yeah, yeah. He was a nice guy, Guy Bon. He was involved in Dominion Drum and Festivals with us. And he was sympathetic, curiously enough. There were some French Canadians in the movement. He adjudicated the festival that I was in, which was the 1967 Dominion Drum Festival, which was all Canadian plays that year. Is that right? And he came, it was in St. John's, which was my hometown, and he wow. came down and adjudicated. No kidding. Yeah, man. He said nice things about me, too. And it was sort of how I got started, because the guy, between him, Madame Bobillon, and Jacques Zouvi, they Madame Bobillon? Yeah. Jacques Zouvi? They all came to St. You knew Jacques? They all came to St. John's. I worked with Jacques. Well, Jacques was in left wing. Well, sort of. Jacques yeah. was on the, on the cusp of the left, like the left wing. Well, he ended up having a relationship with Joanna Goss, who was, I dated her sister, and she moved to Montreal, and was his mistress or girlfriend or something for a long time. And um, and he adjudicated and he said this 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 thing he has talent. And on that basis I decided to become an actor. And that and the fact that you know the parties were fun and the girls, you know, paid attention to me. <laughs> that was my basis of becoming an actor. But sorry, I, I mean George, you're <coughs> No, don't think you're not interrupting you're part of this whole thing. <laughs> so um, so you worked in Insta Theatre and, and they did uh, weekly dramas on, on C B C? Dramas? Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a weekly thing. Yeah, right. I worked with Henry Raymer. Right. You know Henry? Oh, you didn't remember. Ken Davey was running the stuff there. I don't know. Uh, uh, Percy Rodriguez. Yeah. I did some stuff in Eastern Townships with Percy. Right. Percy was funny. Oh, Christ. It was called uh, uh, Le Courrier du Roi. And I played an English soldier. Right. Of course, you know. Yeah. Had hat shot off a number of times, you know, that kind of shit. Uh, 
in the eastern towns of Eastman, and we stayed at uh, we stayed at Magog. Right. Oh, I remember getting laid there. It was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, she was on the way. Oh, you see makeup art. What was her name? Oh, she was so beautiful. Oh, there name. If I knew then what I know now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, well, wait, wait. Yeah. I, Oh, I remember. I was in. I was in Percy's car. We were, We used to go every time uh, after the shoot. We would jump in a car and go off to Sherbrooke, right. right? There was some crazy, crazy bars and shit in Sherbrooke. So we used to eat and oh, there was a great restaurant, steak restaurant. Oh, fuck. all that shit. Anyway, one day driving along with Percy in the car, it had a convertible, and for some reason we got to t talking about some damn thing or other. And he was so sick of the whole business, from what I could gather, but he was stuck in it like I was. Uh, and we enjoyed it. What the hell? You know what it's like. But Percy brought up what he wanted. He said, this came out of nowhere. I don't, know, I don't know why it always stuck with me, but he said, the hell with this noise. I'm going to go into the religion business. <laughs> I never twigged, never twigged to much later, like how much money you can make in the religion business. Right, yeah. You know? Uh, it's a great business. Oh, God. Anyway, per Percy, he wound up in California somewhere. And Seeking work, yes. Yes. along with Berman, Lenny Berman. Berman right? Jacques Zuby. Jacques Zuby directed a a thing that we opened up the piggery one year. It was it had been dark for a number of years, right. and uh, Jacques directed this thing called uh, 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 Goodbye Charlie, mm -hmm. a piece of goddamn summer froth, you mm -hmm. know. And I was in it with, with Sidoni. Wow, what a sequence of events. Uh, uh, Mort Rance, you remember Mort? Mm -hmm. yes. Mort directed us in some Irish stuff, some three, uh, three act, uh, one act, three one act Irish plays. That was more, that was kind of a lot of fun. Mort directed a film called Bale. Beg your pardon? He directed a film for the NFB. Yeah, I did the photography. I'm sorry. I did the photography on that set on, uh, on Bayo. Yeah, I was also in it. I played, I played a fish. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a vignette, yeah. a fisherman. I was driving one of these guys. Do you remember the young boy? Yeah, the yeah. kid. Well, and Pat Phillips, Patricia Phillips, was in my class, and she was in Bayo. And the young boy, Steve and Guy McGraw. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you know, his his aunt was my godmother. Blah blah blah. You talking about? beautiful girl, Stephen told me, to, he said, you know, the first time I got laid, I was only 16, he said, and it was around the bay in Newfoundland, it was in the back seat of a small car with a, an older girl, she was 18, I was 16, and he said, it was so small, he says, you know, I was taking her from behind, and in the middle of it, she reaches up, she cross-eyed, he said, she reaches up, grabs my long hair, pulls me down, she says, father caught two salmon this morning. <laughs> 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 yeah, you that don't. Little kid, that little kid that fails. <laughs> too much. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know. You don't. What's it? How's it go? You don't know who's. Uh, you don't know who's naked until the tide goes out. <laughs> so you, you, uh, you um, Mort Ranson. Mort Ranson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he directed in three Irish plays, and then and then you were shooting on CBC. You were one of the guys that worked fairly consistent at CBC in the days when they were shooting here, mm. yeah, and the NFB mm. as well. Yeah, John I, uh, Smith. Uh, beg pardon? With John Smith. That uh, well, John Smith directed the first film I was in, for Christ's sake. Which was? It was called, wow. Keep at it, keep at it. It's all coming back to me mm -hmm. now. It's called The Clerk. Yeah. You know, the film board had this whole series of educational things, right? Like right. Telling folks what was going on in the whole, you know, the world of Canada. Right. I don't know who wrote that shit, man. It was just like, oh, it's impossible to work with. <clears throat> and John Smith and a whole bunch of oh, a bunch of guys too from England coming over here, right, directing this stuff. Right. And they were very, very, very stodgy kind of uh, shooting, you know. It's really nothing going on. I remember sitting there. I remember the first goddamn scene I was in. <laughs> in the clerk. And I was working it with a uh, Canadian folk singer, big heavy guy, folk singer, famous folk Canadian folk singer. From the East Coast. Uh, well, he sang songs from all over the place. I don't know where he was from. Stan Rogers? Hmm? Stan Rogers? No. Valdi? No, not Valdi, no. Come on, guy. Go ahead. Anyway, uh, whatever. Lightfoot? 
No, no. Cool. He made records and shit like that too. But uh, Murray McLaughlin. No. Keep going, guys. Anyway, anyway buddy. This is before Murray, whatever. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> buddy, what's his name? Buddy, what? Buddy, yeah, buddy, yeah, yeah. What's his name in the voice? Uh, 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 I remember the first scene. I remember the guy, I remember John Smith saying action. And I felt like the blood draining out of my body. Because this was a big deal for the film board, the film, you know. And I'm sitting opposite this, and there was another guy, a well known Canadian actor, played the boss at his office in the clerk guy, where I was a clerk. Anyway, the scene went all right, I guess, and they said cut, and they played the goddamn thing back. Played the sound back. I'd never heard my own voice. I've been suffering with that ever since. It's just coming back to me right now, and I'm trying to, like, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that sound. It yeah. scared the hell out of me. It was weird. It was so strange. It made a big mark on me for some reason or other. Anyway, I'm afraid of microphones ever since. Uh, the uh, clerk. John's become a good friend, and... Uh, and uh, <clears throat> John Smith? Yeah, become a good friend, and his son. I did uh, Willie Loman out on the West Coast uh, a couple of summers ago, and Dylan was in it, and then he and I did a big hit in Toronto together, and Dylan just got married. He's over in London. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, and, 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 and of course, you know, John came to Newfoundland to do the Boys of St. Vincent and stuff like that. So you oh, were, the Boys of St. Vincent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. were working here a lot in film and TV and stage. <clears throat> yeah, well, a lot, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Makes I, was getting, I was getting some work, yeah. yeah. Tell me, what does, what does Actor Fraternal Benefit Society mean for you? Oh, I was worried about this question. <clears throat> I have no idea. No? Well, no, I, 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 know, I know what they do, and, that, that, uh, and uh, like I say, I'm uh, died in a world lefty, and I pay my dues when it's a union involved. The unions for me are critical. So whatever it comes, I get work, don't get work, I pay my dues anyway. Right. So the union is very important for me. And I guess AFBS is also important because we have these dinners every year. For <laughs> I get drunk and I scream at I scream at uh, I scream at everybody. Well, they're all reactionaries, right? <clears throat> as well. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I I thought I was going to wear my little red patch, you know, at dinner last night. Um, so, all right. Yes, after Fraternal yes, yes. Benefit Society. It, you're a riffer, so you must have had RSP monies. <clears throat> no, I, very, I, I don't send any money in. I, I got a bit of a riff. I look at, I look at it every once in a while. It comes, you know, comes in the mail. I look at it, and I, you know, I'm not interested. That's all I can say about it. Right. Money doesn't interest me. Not you funny. Do you take insurance? Do you hmm? Use the insurance plan? No, I, I don't even ask about it. I don't know what they, co I don't know what they cover as far as I'm concerned. I just don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't care. You know it's member owned, right? Big pardon? It's owned by actors. It's, we own it. Too. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it makes it easier to keep it working for us. No, it's organized. I understand that. That's no, it's it's critical. It's important. Fred, what, what but somebody else is doing it. I don't do that kind what of. What is thing. the uh, what What are some of the great uh, mentors you, you <clears> have <throat> as an actor? I don't know, uh, mentors. Um, or influences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, mentors. I don't know, I, you know, I picked up all of this, most of this stuff myself. I never had, like... You're saying, you said you were your own mentor, for heaven's sakes. You <laughs> arrogant person, you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And nobody See, inspired you? What's that? Well, I was beyond mentors. I was like, like the lady in the stands just said. Well, I was survivor. arrogant. You were a survivor too. I was fucking arrogant. That's what it was. I, I knew what I had to do. I just went and did it. I didn't ask any questions. And okay, let me ask this. Who have you worked with that you really got their work? Oh, there's, yeah, there's a whole number of people. I can't remember names, for God's sake. I was impressed with a lot of folks. Uh, I worked with Jacques, with Zubi. I worked with George Bloomfield. I worked with, uh, <clears throat> I worked with Mort. Uh, uh, 
but uh, Irv Myers, Drama Playhouse, that's what it was called. Drama Playhouse, right. Irv Myers, a couple other people there, left-wing people. I admired these people. They were good people. I was, uh, uh, well, something, uh, yeah, I, no, I was sort of blinded from the time my granny left somehow, you know, there was something, as I said, something closed in the back there somewhere. <clears throat> I, uh, the left-wing movement opened it up a little bit. There were a lot of people there that were really, you know, important for me. You became a new home. Yeah, 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 Harry Binder and all these guys, anyway. Um, but, like, like, when you, if you had, you, you raised a daughter who's a good actress. How yeah, I have five. I mean, I have two daughters and three, three sons. And how does that feel? How does it feel? Yeah. It's pretty goddamn scary. <clears throat> it's, it's, yeah, it, mm. I have a lot of difficulty with it. Uh, I miss their youth. I miss their, I miss their early childhood. And it, it, it's, it's, it's made more, uh, it's made a little more, I guess, painful, I, perhaps might be the word. <clears throat> when I, uh, When I found myself on the stage at doing Goodbye Charlie, I spoke to Carrie about this the other day. I hadn't thought about it for a while. But uh, it wasn't a good marriage, just to begin with. Uh, and uh, I left it at some point after 17 years. Left the kids behind in a way. I saw them weekends, that kind of shit. You know, I left them. lived in the lived in the suburbs. Had a house in Shamity. Um And I think that that what happened to me on the stage had something to do with the next step I made in the in the world of well showbiz in a sense. <clears throat> uh, I was doing this goodbye Charlie thing, and uh, suddenly became very objective about myself standing on this, you know, on the on these boards. And looking at the audience and wondering what's going on here? Why am I doing this? Am I doing this just for the for the chuckles? Because it was. It was summer froth. Ha ha ha. And by that time my experience in the in the theater I was uh I was, like I said, I was pretty arrogant of what was good, what was bad, but I had a love relationship with it. In that for me, the 